You are listening to MCC Geopod, the geopolitical podcast of the Maciej Korvinas Collegium, the largest talent management institute in Hungary. If you want to know more about our mission, please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en or check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. For interesting articles and analysis of our professors and students, look up our knowledge base at korvinek.hu slash en. So welcome everybody. This is the MCC's Geopod podcast. I am your host Zolta Shitkei and uh, joining me today in the studio is uh, Peter Shikloshi. Good morning. Um, Peter was a uh, deputy state secretary for defense policy uh, at the Hungarian Ministry of Defense and uh, a defense counselor at the Hungarian representation uh, to NATO. Today's topic is uh, NATO and uh, its role in the Ukrainian war. And uh, first of all, I would like to ask you about uh, what do you think about uh, the responsibility of, of NATO in, in terms of uh, the eruption of the Ukrainian war? Uh, first of all, uh, I think we uh, have to define what NATO is and what NATO isn't, uh, because Uh, that's important to understand uh, NATO's role. Uh, NATO is not an international uh, player uh, in the sense um, uh, that um, uh, nation states are. So um, um, the United States, China, Russia, in some cases and issues and sometimes even the EU Um, is an uh, international player uh, on its own right. Um, NATO isn't. NATO is an alliance of uh, previously 30, now 32 states, allies. Um, and, and NATO is, a, in this sense, a very conservative um, organization since um, NATO is governed by a consensus rule, uh, which means that everybody has to agree to everything, which means uh, that um, uh, in certain uh, issue, in every issue, uh, basically, uh, the least willing um, dictates um, the speed uh, of, of, uh, of the alliance. So quite a conservative um, um, organization. Um, this means that uh, NATO doesn't do international politics on its own. Uh, the United States does, European uh, allies do, but NATO as such uh, uh, does not. Uh, so, um, of course, um, uh, these um, international players like the US or Germany or uh, others are acting uh, sometimes through uh, NATO. So uh, when, the, when the U.S. Um, wants to achieve something, uh, then it acts through, um, through NATO. Now, back to the original question, um, which was, what is the responsibility uh, of, of NATO? Uh, I think NATO's responsibility uh, is that it created false hopes um, in Ukraine and in others as well, but uh, now we are speaking about uh, uh, Ukraine. And again, it wasn't really NATO. Uh, it was first and foremost the United States. Because in 2008, uh, during the um, uh, Bucharest uh, summit, um, the United States and some other allies uh, wanted uh, to uh, uh, give a very firm uh, uh, road and timeline uh, to Ukraine to join uh, the alliance. Many other allies were strongly against it, first and foremost, um, uh, Germany and France, but also others. And there was no consensus uh, uh, on this. And at the end, the compromise was that um, Ukraine did not get anything concrete but got a very shiny but false uh, statement uh, that um, Ukraine will uh, become a NATO member. Uh, it was very obvious for everybody who knew how uh, NATO works that 
Ukraine will never be a um, NATO member, or you know, never say never, but uh, <laughs> not at the foreseeable future. But uh, those who want to use this, um, this um, statement uh, are in a very easy position yeah, because there is a written statement that Ukraine will become a NATO member. And th this, this was a false hope. Putin and Russia uh, used this, um, this sentence um, for their uh, own benefit. So if, if we are looking for NATO's responsibility, this is, this is NATO's responsibility. But again, uh, that's not that much NATO's responsibility. It's, um, it was a U.S. Um, uh, responsibility here. And uh, did the war change this uh, path for for Ukraine uh, af after the the war has erupted? Um, new new voices started to sound that maybe NATO will accept uh, Ukraine. Did anything change on this front, or it's still a hope? Uh, I I I don't think so. I don't think that um, much has changed. Um, again, never say never. But um, the situation is that. Um, NATO only accepts uh, new members or new allies in case they do not have open conflicts uh, with other uh, states. And very obviously, uh, Ukraine has an open conflict um, uh, with Russia uh, uh, nowadays. And uh, it looks like that this conflict will not go away, um, which means uh, that um, Ukraine cannot really realistically become a NATO member um, anytime soon. On the other hand, uh, um, there is a uh, growing moral pressure uh, nowadays that uh, Ukraine deserves uh, uh, to uh, become uh, a member. To be realistic, when it comes to decision making, it's, it's, it's not that much uh, about moral pressure. Uh, it's about interests. And, um, you know, let's be very blunt. Who wants to uh, give a firm Article 5 security guarantee to a country uh, which has, uh, which is in, basically in open war um, uh, with a uh, nuclear superpower? Um, that's, that's not realistic uh, for the foreseeable future. Now, if... And in case uh, this um, conflict uh, between um, Russia and Ukraine is solved, and that's a big if, because it would mean that, uh, that Russia gives up uh, her plans and um, Ukraine regains all the territories. You know, this, uh, th this sounds unrealistic uh, uh, right now. Of course, you know, history can make... Uh, uh, interesting turns and unexpected turns, but right now, under um, current circumstances, this is unrealistic. Um, so, um, consequently, the um, uh, near future um, uh, membership of Ukraine is, is unrealistic. So, uh, you think there are no ways if maybe not, not uh, with uh, gaining all the territories back by Ukraine, but uh, Maybe the war ends with uh, the partition of Ukraine. It, it's it's still uh, impossible after the war. For uh, no, no, it's not. But uh, for for that, in case uh, the end result of the war is the partition of Ukraine, and in case the remaining Ukraine declares that it it is happy with the, that situation and does not have any territorial disputes anymore uh, with Russia, then theoretically, it's not impossible. Of course, the allies have to believe this. So this has to be credible. Uh, and personally, that's my opinion, this is not very realistic. And uh, if we are talking about allies, um we should talk about uh, Hungary as well. What's what's the Hungarian standpoint on this? Uh, should we uh, accept uh, Ukraine? Should we make moves uh, to 
incorporate them to the alliance or? This is, um, the, the Hungarian position is that this question is not on the table and uh, we don't deal with questions which are not on the table. During the, the Bucharest summit, the Hungarian position was not very vocal because we saw that there is no consensus uh, around that. And in that case, um, you are not very vocal. Uh, so we, we don't really know uh, what would have been Hungarian position back in, in 2008. Uh, right now, the question is not on the table, so we don't have to decide. But this is only about membership. Supporting Ukraine, that's another uh, issue. Uh, and Hungary does support um, uh, Ukraine uh, with um, uh, humanitarian aid, basically. That, uh, that's the most important, you know, which uh, goes from, uh, from money to oil, gas, reverse flow, and uh, um, you know, various other uh, things. Uh, not with uh, uh, lethal uh, military aid, uh, that, is, uh, that is obvious uh, and well known. So um, basically this is um, uh, the Hungarian position. And uh, it's a good thing that you mentioned the, the weapons and the military aid because uh, we know that m most of the NATO memberships do uh, support uh, Ukraine with uh, with military equipment and uh, some uh, some of them with even personnel. Um, what do you think? Can this be called as NATO participating? No, uh, it is not. Um, NATO is very strict on um, distancing uh, itself from uh, the uh, military aid, little military aid. It is done in another format. Um, it's an ad hoc um, coalition of the willing um, format. It is sometimes called the Rammstein um, uh, format uh, because uh, their first uh, meeting, the, the first meeting of, of, of those countries, I don't say allies because uh, there were many more than only allies uh, there. Um, was the gathering was in was in uh, um, the the U.S. air base uh, in Rammstein, uh, Germany. NATO does support Ukraine with coordination of um, humanitarian um, and uh, non-lethal uh, military aid, but. The overwhelming majority of of, um, of the of the uh, military aid and uh, the totality of the of the little military aid is done by uh, nation states, the United States, uh, UK, um, and I don't know, uh, forty plus um, uh, other uh, countries. And um, what do you think about the the fact that? Uh, it's clear that the U.S. used uh, NATO to gain influence, maybe in in Ukraine, and uh, this caused the tension mostly with Russia and uh, these other NATO member states got uh, maybe pulled into, forced into this uh, this war and and forced to to choose sides. Can can, can this be said? Is is this true? Um, <clears throat> I, I would formulate it in a little bit of a different um, uh, way. There are uh, countries uh, which, for certain reasons and, and different reasons, would like to um, bring Ukraine closer to NATO or to uh, make it join uh, NATO. Um, Poland uh, and the Baltic states, um, they uh, truly believe that uh, and maybe some others, but first and foremost, um, uh, Poland and, and the Baltic states truly believe that uh, it is in the best interest of, um, of the alliance of NATO uh, and the West, uh, to put it this way, to um, have a firm border between the hostile Russia and the defensive West uh, at the um, 
eastern borders of Ukraine. So as far to the east um, uh, as possible. Um, so they, they want to uh, see um, Ukraine join the alliance. The United States is supporting Ukraine, but it's not clear at all that the United States would welcome uh, Ukraine inside NATO. The, the United States supports Ukraine because of various reasons. One reason is, and that's my opinion again, um, is that um, it's in the interest of the United States to weaken Russia uh, as much as possible. I don't think we do have time to go into why uh, and what's the big picture uh, here, but the United States ha has to look uh, first and foremost at China and everything has to be put into this perspective. And the US-Russia relationship is put in, 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 in this uh, relationship. And th there's another reason, and that's a domestic political reason in the United States that they do uh, support everything which is against uh, Russia, and it has to uh, do with um, um, the 2016 uh, elections um, and the accusations uh, that Trump uh, won the elections uh, because Putin helped him, which we know by now uh, is that, it's, that it's not proven at all. They were looking for um, evidences for uh, four years or more, and they found nothing, uh, but still um, uh, for, the, for the left, uh, for the Democratic Party in, in the US, uh, it's important um, to punish uh, Putin uh, and consequently Russia. And so um, th this has to do with, um, uh, with, with the help. Other uh, parts of the, of, of the alliance, other allies, look at the issue from a different angle um, they naturally are, every, everybody is under a moral pressure. Uh, and let's be honest, Zelensky uh, played this uh, moral pressure very cleverly. We will see how long uh, he can play this, but um, he, he played uh, this card very, very cleverly. So everybody is under moral pressure, um, but this does not mean that they have the same idea of the um, favorable outcome uh, of, of this situation. Uh, you know, the alternative to a, a strong border uh, between um, NATO and, um, and Russia uh, is a gray zone uh, between the two. And by the way, uh, for a very long time, uh, this was the um, situation. Uh, Ukraine was a gray zone um, uh, between Russia and, um, uh, and NATO. And some believe that this should be kept uh, like that. And um, while talking about should it be kept it like that or not, uh, we also know that uh, Finland joined uh, NATO. Uh, is this uh, a change in this, so it shouldn't be kept like that? Like yes, like yeah, the, yes, this is uh, a, a very um, important uh, change. Sweden and Finland were traditionally neutral, let's, let's say neutral. But let's not go into the legal definition of neutrality, but they were neutral in different ways. Uh, you know, Finland had a, a, a very uh, distinct Finnish model um, of, of neutrality. But during the Cold War, it was very clear that in most senses they are part of the West, but uh, they shouldn't join um, uh, NATO. That, that was modus operandi in, in, uh, during, during the Cold War. Now, after the, um, the very clear uh, aggression of, um, uh, of Russia towards Ukraine, the domestic political um, situation changed in these uh, uh, two countries. Basically, those forces who were always present, but in minority, uh, who wanted to join um, uh, NATO, 
uh, became majority and um, they joined NATO during a very smooth uh, uh, process because um, they fulfill every criteria and uh, they are willing to and uh, the 30 allies who have to decide they are all willing to uh, uh, accept uh, these countries. Of course, here is an issue uh, or was an issue, uh, we will see, uh, with Turkey, um, which, which had uh, issues with mostly uh, Sweden, uh, but to a lesser uh, degree with, with Finland as well. And they want to see um, this issue solved before um, they uh, allow um, these countries inside, but I'm pretty sure um, uh, this will be solved uh, and they will soon become uh, uh, NATO members. That's, that's a very big change compared to the Cold War because with, um, uh, with Finland, NATO will have a brand new 1,300 kilometers long border with Russia, which means that Russia will have to dislocate troops. We can argue about how, how many troops, uh, but considerable troops uh, into that area, which is quite a hostile area. Uh, I mean, uh, climate-wise, uh, not an easy uh, uh, area geographically. So uh, it will cost um, uh, Russia a lot. NATO will not really put new forces there. Uh, the Finns are very clear uh, about they can manage it. We will see, you know, that's, that's land forces mostly. We will see what will happen with Air Force, but um, that's another issue. And Sweden is also important um, because uh, her um, naval influence um, uh, and, and geography, again, in the Baltic Sea. You know, that, uh, th that's also important because that restricts Russia's um, naval uh, uh, maneuver maneuverability in the Baltic Sea. And uh, as for my last question, um, there is a, a debate going on whether sending uh, military aid and military equipment into Ukraine, whether it's, it's uh, helping or is it just uh, forcing the war to, to mm, go longer and, and uh, forcing the conflict. What's, what's uh, coming in the, in the future for NATO? Uh, will this continue? Will, uh, will the NATO take a bigger part in this conflict? How do you see it? To start with the last question, uh, I don't think NATO will take a bigger part uh, in, the, in this conflict. NATO's role uh, in the conflict is to keep the allies safe, which is um, basically done by deterrence uh, through reinforcement uh, of the um, so-called Eastern allies. And, and that, that has already been done. Uh, Eastern allies have uh, been reinforced. Um, NATO uh, uh, troops, there are no such things as NATO troops. I mean, allied troops um, are on a, a higher readiness. And deterrence works. Uh, it's very clear that, um, that Russia never really threatened NATO proper. You know, let's forget about uh, verbal assaults. That's another thing. But militarily, um, never um, uh, endangered um, uh, NATO territory proper. So, that's NATO's role, and that will um, uh, be NATO's role in the future uh, as well. Now, whether the aid, military aid and lethal aid help Ukraine and or will prolong uh, the war. I think both are true. It did help Ukraine because uh, without that, most probably uh, Russia would have already captured much um, larger territories. By the way, Russia's military performance in this war is, how to put it, is um, abysmal um, or in a more 
restricted um, um, uh, way, way uh, underperforming uh, uh, compared to the expectations. Um, in NATO, the joke was that uh, before the war, everybody thought that um, Russia has the uh, second strongest uh, military in the world. Now everybody knows uh, that uh, Russia has the second strongest uh, military in Ukraine. Of course, that's a joke, but um, basically everybody thought that uh, Russia will win uh, in no time, in a very short uh, period of time. And compared to that, um, the performance of the Russian military is um, way under expectations. But this war does not only have one military front, it has uh, another front as well, or we can call it, a, we can even call it a, a separate war. That's, that's basically an economic war uh, between the West um, uh, and Ukraine. And that's another thing, uh, because um, winter is coming and um, the uh, energy and economic um, uh, problems of uh, mostly Europe uh, are growing. Uh, and we will see what the uh, social consequences of this uh, will be on um, uh, Western Europe. Um, the jury is out, uh, still out. Uh, we don't know uh, what will happen. But uh, if, if this stays for a long time, uh, it will have very long lasting detrimental effects um, uh, on Europe uh, itself. Um, basically the old order when Germany and Russia or Europe and Russia, EU and Russia, uh, lived in an economic symbiosis, looks to be over. Uh, we will see whether it can be reinstalled uh, at all or um, it will change forever. Um, but um, Europe's prosperity was based on uh, cheap Russian uh, energy and raw materials. And if this is gone, then um, Europe will have to reinvent uh, itself and that will be very costly in, in every sense of the world, uh, economically, financially, and socially. Uh, and I'm not sure that the um, Western European societies are ready uh, for this. So that, that other war, uh, is still going on and will probably both wars will go on uh, for a long time. I personally, I don't expect um, this to end before the end of winter. Of course, it's very dangerous to uh, predict, uh, especially uh, uh, the future, uh, but, um, but I don't think so. I'm afraid our time is up. So Peter, thank you for this discussion. It was my pleasure. And uh, for the listeners, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this MCC Geopod episode. For further media content, please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en or look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to read more by our professors and students, check out our knowledge base at corvinec.hu slash en.